ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ان القران الله سبحانه وتعالى orders the muslim ummah with unity with being united he says jalla wa ala wa'tasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu allah says hold on to the rope of allah and do not become divided this rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the quran it is a handhold which it will never break and it will never weaken allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says faman yakfur bitaghuti wa yu'min billahi faqad istamsaka bil urwati alwusqa lan fisama laha so whoever disbelieves in anything which is worshiped besides allah and he believes in allah and he worships allah then he has grabbed hold of the firmest the most reliable handhold that which will never break and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as commanding us to be united he also forbids us from being divided and he says wala takunu min al mushrikeen don't be from those people who are like the polytheists من الذين فرقوا دينهم those who they divided their religion وكانوا شيعا and they became into groups كل حزب بما لديهم فرحون and each group is rejoicing in that which it is upon don't become like those groups each group has its own sect each group thinks that it is correct each group says that we are the only saved group and the rest of them are going to be in the fire the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us to hold on in times of fitna he said that whoever lives fa sayara ikhtilafan kathira he's going to see a lot of differing he's going to see a lot of differing like we do today and then he said so upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me bite down onto it with your molar teeth and beware of innovation for indeed every innovation is misguidance and we all know the very famous hadith where the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that the people of the book they divided into 72 sects and this ummah is going to divide into 73 sects 72 of them are in the fire and that one group is going to be the saved sect this is not me this is the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us about this 72 misguided groups 72 misguided groups some of them are in the fire forever because of their innovation it led to disbelief or their innovation it reached the level of disbelief and some of them in the fire for an appointed time as long as their innovation did not take them outside of the fold of al islam and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in another narration he said all of them are in the fire except for that which i and my companions are upon So we see my brothers that 
we as Muslims, we, we need to unite and we need to avoid becoming disunited. But it's not a false unity. Allah says about these different groups, تَحْسَبُهُمْ جَمِيعًا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ shatta. That you think from the outside that they are united and they are one. But their hearts are divided. This is the mushrikeen. That on the outside it looks like they are united. But their hearts are really divided. And brothers, this is a false type of unity. And we need to understand that the only thing that is going to unite the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the thing which united his companions. The thing which united those companions was the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And what we need to understand is these groups, they all have their callers, they all have their du'at. People who go out and they call the people and they speak in beautiful language saying this is the straight path, this is the straight path. Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu an, he narrates that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he drew a straight line in the sand. He drew a straight line in the sand. And then he said, this is the straight path of Allah. And then he drew lines going off to the left and to the right. And then he said, these are the other lines. These are the other paths. There is no path except that there is a caller calling the people to it. Meaning, the straight path of Allah is one, my brothers. The straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path which will lead you to Jannah, lead you to salvation, is one path. We have people today and they say, no problem. He is a Sunni. He is a Shi'i. Both paths lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, no, rather one path leads to Allah. And the other paths, they lead to the fire of Jahannam. Like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. And then the Messenger of Allah, after drawing these diverging lines, he pointed to the straight path and then he recited the ayah, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاتِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوا That this is my straight path, so follow it. And do not follow those other ways because they will mislead you from his way. So my brothers, the point that we are getting at is that this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is going to be divided and you're never ever going to be able to unite it except on what united the companions. The book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But if we look at the texts in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah, then we get some descriptions of this group. The one saved sect that are upon what the Messenger and his companions were upon, they have some distinguishing factors. And so, when you take them and you collect them, then you understand that there is a methodology at work here. That this saved sect, and I'm not saying that anybody here is from this saved sect, I'm not saying that any group or any, any jama'ah is from the saved sect. Rather, the saved sect, they have their methodology. And that methodology is what is found in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is one of their distinguishing factors? It's that they cling to the way of the messenger of Allah and to the way of his companions and before that, they cling to the book of Allah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, I'm leaving behind you, or I'm leaving behind me amongst you two things, and you will never go astray, for as long as you cling to them, the book of Allah and my sunnah. He never said the book of Allah and my sunnah and these awliya and these books of stories and fairy tales which people ascribe to Islam. He said the book of Allah and my sunnah. If you cling to these, you will never go astray. If you cling to them and you bite down upon them with your molar teeth, you will never go astray. Another thing is that this saved sect, 
they return everything back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of their messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul wa ulil amri minkum. O oh, you who have believed, referring to each and every single one of us, obey Allah, obey His messenger and those in authority amongst you. فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ And if you differ in anything, a difference in the worldly affairs or in the affairs of the religion. This one says, I'm going to do my hajj in this way and I'm going to do my salah in this way and my beard is going to be like this and I'm going to dress like this. But the other one says, no, I'm going to do it like this. Allah says, if you differ in anything, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Return it back to Allah and the Messenger. إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you truly believe in Allah and the last day, refer it back to Allah and His Messenger. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا This is better, and a better methodology and better in terms of an outcome. And so, if we differ in anything, first we go back to the Book of Allah. And then we go to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we make that the judge of our affairs. We make that the judge of our affairs. And this my brothers is the true faith. You're not going to attain true iman, true faith, until you refer it back to Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah takes an oath on the life of the Messenger in one place and in another place Allah takes an oath by Himself. He says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ But know by your Lord, Allah takes a, an oath by Himself. He says they're not truly going to believe, they're not truly going to attain that faith until they make you a judge over their affairs. And then they don't feel any animosity or any difficulty in accepting your judgment. This is the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in doing this brothers, what do we seek? We seek the love of Allah. And we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For wallahi there are groups and there are people, they claim to love Allah. They claim to love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it's false and it's a lie. Allah tells the Messenger to tell us, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي If you truly love Allah, then follow me. يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah will love you and He will forgive you your sins. How can you claim to love Allah when Allah is saying to you, follow this Messenger which I have sent down? How can you claim to love Allah when Allah has sent you a religion has told you it's perfect? Yet you turn away from his messenger. Yet you turn away from his religion. And then we have the audacity to say, I love Allah. This is lip service and this is shaitan who has misguided us and is making us believe our own lies. But in the sight of Allah, my brothers, it is not accepted. The saved sect, they do not give precedence. They do not put the words of anybody or the statements of anybody over the statements of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, O oh you who have believed, do not put yourselves before Allah and His Messenger. And then in the next ayah, Allah says, O oh you who have believed, don't raise your voices over the voice of the Messenger. Look, subhanallah, and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, the great companion, the cousin of the Prophet alayhi salam, look what he said. He said, I fear that these people are going to be destroyed. Meaning the next generation which came after the companions, yet still from the best of the generations. He said, I fear that these people will be destroyed because I say Allah's Messenger said, and they say, Abu Bakr and Umar said. Meaning, this great companion is trying to make us understand when we come upon the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then nobody's statement matters after that. Ibn Abbas is saying, I fear that they will be destroyed. Do you know why? 
Because I say, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, The Messenger said this. And these people are saying, Abu Bakr and Umar said this. And he said, because of this, I fear they're going to be destroyed. What about us? We say the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the next person says, Abu Hanifa said. We say the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and they say, Peer Saab said. We say the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and they say, my forefathers said. If he feared destruction because these people, they didn't put the Messenger, they didn't take the words of the Messenger before Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu, and he's giving this as an example. And we do not differentiate between the companions. All of them were upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of them are in Jannah. All of them are from the awliya of Allah. And yet, after that, somebody comes and he brings a statement of somebody else and he tries to put it next to the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ikhwan, Abu Hanifa is not your Rasul. Abu Hanifa is not your messenger. Ahmed was not your messenger. Malik and Shafi, they were not your messengers. May Allah have mercy on them all. The messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his words are binding upon you. His words are binding upon you. As for the words of anybody else, they're not binding upon you. So don't change your religion. Don't change your religion. Follow the book of Allah, the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for another one of the distinguishing factors of this saved sect, then they call the people to Tawheed, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. And they give this the greatest of emphasis. Because they understand the statement of Allah, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ We sent to every nation a messenger. What did these messengers do when they went to their people? Did they try and establish an Islamic government first and foremost? Like we have these groups. We need the Khilafah, we need the Khilafah. And their houses are full of shirk and bid'ah. Their houses are full of haram. They can't even establish the Khilafah in their own homes. And they want to establish it upon the earth. And they say we need the Khilafah. And they don't call to Tawheed. They don't call to the Sunnah. They don't warn against shirk. So the saved sect first and foremost, they understand. There's no point a person beautifying his prayer. There's no point a person making hajj. There's no point a person fasting the month of Ramadan and giving charity. If he has committed shirk with Allah, all of his deeds will be null and void. So why are we trying to build a beautiful building without any foundation, subhanAllah? So they understand the foundations of this religion first and foremost. The foundations of our da'wah is to call our people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And wallahi my brothers, we are in need of this now more than ever before. We all have family members. We all have family members who go and they go to the bars and they call upon the graves. When they have a need... They don't call out to Allah, they call out to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, they call out to the Messenger alayhi salam. This is shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they die upon this, if they die upon this, they die upon a way other than the way of Al-Islam. We are in need of this more than ever before. We look at our countries, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. Why are they in the situation that they are in? We say Muslim countries, why are they being humiliated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way? Why is the situation the way that it is? Because they have turned away from Tawheed and they have turned to Shirk. And so they are being humiliated, as is the whole of the Muslim Ummah being humiliated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, from the methodology of the saved sect, is that they try to renew and rejuvenate the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in doing so, they become something strange in their people. And so the people call them names, and they give them labels, and they mock them, and they curse them. But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that Islam began as something strange. And it will go back to being something strange. So glad tidings to those strangers. Those who cling to my sunnah after the people have left it. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that for each and every single messenger, there were people who, they were shayateen, who they attacked them and they abused them. My brothers, if, if, you are treading the path of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then you know that you're going to be named. You know that you're going to have labels attached to you. You know that people are going to backbite you and slander you. They called the best of creation a madman sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They called him a poet. They called him somebody who was possessed. They called him a soothsayer, a fortune teller. And if you follow his way, then you have to expect to get a certain amount of that. Meaning if you give preference to a tawheed, if you give preference to the sunnah, then you're definitely going to be afflicted by this. My brothers, from the way of the saved sect, is that they enjoin the good and they forbid the evil. As Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best ummah ever raised for the people. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You enjoin what is good, you forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah. You enjoin what is good, so you enjoin the people. In these ten days of Dhul Hijjah, for example, concerning which the Messenger of Allah said, there are no days in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah than these ten days, we are in them right now. The people said, not even jihad fi sabilillah. The Messenger said, not even jihad fi sabilillah, except for a person who goes out with his self and his wealth and he comes back with nothing, meaning he's martyred for the sake of Allah. Other than him, these ten days, the good deeds are more beloved to Allah in these ten days than in any other time. So we enjoin the people to do a lot of dhikr of Allah. So we say, say alhamdulillah, say la ilaha illallah, say Allahu Akbar. Give charity. Give the sacrifice. Fast on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, meaning the day of Arafah, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whoever fasts on this day, I hope it will be an expiation for him, for the previous year's sins and the coming year's sins. This is on Sunday, brothers. Fasting on Sunday. This is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, this Sunday coming. So they enjoin what is good and they forbid what is evil. So they firstly forbid their people from shirk, that is the greatest evil. After that, they forbid their people from innovating in the religion of Allah, that's the next greatest evil after shirk. And then after that, they warn the people about committing those major sins and turning away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, from this saved sect, is that they cling to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded them and forbade them. And they understand that a command from the Messenger of Allah is the same as a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever He gives to you, whatever He orders you with, then take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever he forbids you from, abstain from it. And so, for example, one of them comes and he says, this is what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Then they're not like those people who say, show me in the Qur'an. Show me in the Qur'an. Because it was Ibn Masood radiallahu an. He said, Allah has cursed the woman who plucks her eyebrows and she files her teeth and she tattoos and the one who does the tattooing as well. Allah has cursed that woman who plucks her eyebrows. The curse of Allah is the one who, um, the one who plucks her eyebrows. And then the one who files her teeth and the one who tattoos and the one who has the tattoo done. Brothers, if you have wives and they're doing this, the curse of Allah is upon them. You need to go and teach your family. And it's not like, for example, and I pick out the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, because our community are from that madhab. So for example, in their madhab, what they say and what their maulanas teach them, is that if your husband tells you to pluck your eyebrows, you can pluck your eyebrows. But the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you, the curse of Allah is upon the one who, cur- who, who trims her eyebrows like this. Whose words are you going to take? 
your husband, is he going to carry the curse for you? Is he going to go to the hellfire for you? Or are you going to listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So one of the companions at that time, she heard the statement of Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu, that Allah curses such and such. She said, I read the Qur'an from cover to cover, and I never found the thing that you are mentioning. I read the Qur'an from the beginning all the way to the end, and I never found where Allah says He curses these people. Ibn Masood said, had you read the statement of Allah, what the Messenger gives you, then take it. What the Messenger forbids you from, then abstain from it. He said, had you read this statement, you would have found it. Because indeed the Messenger, he forbade us from these things. Look at the understanding of those companions. That when it comes from the Messenger of Allah, it's the same as coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says He doesn't speak from His own desires. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It is revelation which is sent down upon Him. So my brother, subhanallah, whenever you have an affair, you want to know how you should look, you want to know how you should pray, you want to know how you should fast, you want to know how you should give zakah, you want to know how you should make hajj, you want to know how your business transactions are. Search out for an ayah from the book of Allah and search out from a hadith or a statement or an action or a tacit approval from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the methodology. This is the methodology. Why do you go to what the Imam said? Why don't you see what the Imam used as his evidence? Because the words of the Imam are not an evidence in this religion. The words of Abu Hanifa, they are not Dalil in this religion. So if Abu Hanifa says, you can pluck your eyebrows, we say thank you very much, we respect you, we love you, but we love the Messenger more. And we are not obliged to follow you, we are obliged to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, this is the correct methodology. And when we get to this, then we see that there are differences of opinion and matters. But when we differ, it increases our love. You have an evidence, I have an evidence. We look at the evidences in different ways, or we follow the scholars who looked at the evidences in different ways. It increases our love. It increases our affection for one another. Did you know that just a few years ago, there used to be four jama'ahs in the haram in Mecca? Did you know this? So the Shafi'is would pray and the Shafi'is they would pray behind them. And the Hanafis would pray and the Hanafis would pray behind them in Mecca, in the Haram. Four different Jama'at. Because one of each Madhab, they prayed behind their Imam. This is recent, my brothers. They fabricated a hadith. They fabricated a hadith. So they said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, there is a man known as a Shafi'i, and he is worse for my ummah than Iblis. Look at this, subhanallah. So the people of the different madhabs, they, they fought. Is this how we're going to attain unity, ya ikhwan? Wallahi, no unity upon this. Unity upon the book of Allah, the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the way of those companions. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا إخواني we're going to pray the Eid Salah بإذن الله تعالى this coming Monday on the 12th of September and if the weather is okay meaning if it's not raining then inshallah there is going to be one Jamaat in English at 8.30 okay so that's the park back here it's going to be at 8.30 I will be leading that Salah بإذن الله تعالى as for if it's raining, then there are going to be two uh, congregational prayers, okay? There's going to be one at 8.30 in the masjid, of course, in English, and there's going to be one at 9.30, again, in, uh, in the Urdu language, but in the masjid. So please, brothers, the way of the Eid Salah is that the Imam, he arrives, and the people form up, and they pray, okay? There is no khutbah before the Eid Salah. So if you are late, you will miss the Eid prayer. If you are late, you will miss the Eid prayer. Okay? And I, bi'ithnillah, will be here at 8.30 and will begin on the dot at 8.30. Okay? We need to stick to our times as Muslims and turn up on time, bi'ithnillah. Okay? Of course, if there is 
uh, things outside of our control, we leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, secondly, the masjid building, uh, or the extension of the masjid is underway, as you brothers can see. Um, last weekend there was an unfortunate incident where one of the uncles, uh, he hurt himself. Uh, so I believe that that was due to negligence from the builders. Ala kulli hal, the the administration of this masjid, they have told me to let you brothers and sisters know, alhamdulillah that situation is now being sorted out and the relevant um, actions are being taken. But they've pleased asked me to please take care when walking past the building work. It is a building site, there's a lot of people coming and going, so please take care. And finally, as you can see, that extension project is going on. Please donate generously. Wa barakallahu feekum wa aqimu salah.